Test weight is a very important grain quality parameter for corn. Test weight in part determines the grade of a corn crop. And thus, if certain minimum test weights are not achieved, uh, the farmer can be docked um, um, a penalty when they're marketing or selling their corn. Test weight at its most basic level is the weight uh, of grain in a given volume. Typically, it's measured in grams per half liter. You can see the apparatus used to measure test weight in the photo on the right. And on the left, here you can see the minimum test rate requirements. This is grams per half a liter for each grade of corn. In Ontario, generally, you start getting significant uh, penalties when you're marketing your corn once uh, that corn uh, reaches below grade three. And so essentially a minimum test weight of 322 grams per half liter uh, is required to market corn without a, a pretty large uh, penalty uh, when, when, when selling your grain due to low test weight. A classic management practice to increase corn test weight is to dry that corn grain down. That can be accomplished either by delaying harvest, waiting for the sun and the wind to dry grain out naturally before it's combined, or by placing harvested grain in a uh, grain drying apparatus of some sort. Drying corn increases test weight through two uh, mechanisms. First, when water evaporates, every gram of water that evaporates is reducing volume by one cubic centimeter because the density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter. So generally, as corn grain dries, it shrinks. However, if corn is being dried at very, very high temperatures very quickly, this reduction in corn uh, volume or kernel volume may not occur. If you heat that corn up too quickly, uh, you might get this popcorn-like effect where the, the kernel will actually increase in size uh, as it's losing water. The second reason why drying corn increases test weight is because it's increasing kernel density. While water has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter, starch, which is primarily what a corn uh, kernel is made from, has a density of 1.5 grams per centimeter cubed. This means that as that corn dries, it's losing relatively light water, but the heavier, denser starch is staying. And so overall, kernel density, the grams per cubic centimeter of kernel, is increasing. And so for these two reasons, uh, dried down corn generally increases test weight. So let's run through an example to understand the relationship between moisture concentration and test weight. So let's say we have some grade four corn testing at 320 grams for half liter at 28% moisture. Let me just get my laser pointer here. So 320 grams gets us at grade four corn just before making grade three. We're, we're two grams per half liter away from making grade three corn. I should note that 0.5 liters is equal to 500 cubic centimeters. And the current density of this corn is 0.64 grams per cubic centimeter. In other words, 320 grams divided by 500 cubic centimeters. And at our given moisture concentration, we have 90 kilograms of water in that 320 uh, grams of, of grain. So let's try to dry things. Let's dry to remove 15 grams of water, which is the equivalent of moving from 28 to 25% grain moisture. Because we're, we're removing 15 grams of water and each gram of water takes up one cubic centimeter of space, we are going to gain 15 cubic centimeters of extra space. In other words, in that little cup that we get our test weight from, we have 15 cubic centimeters extra to put more grain in now that we've dried the grain that was in the cup. So let's get some more grade four corn, understanding that the density is 0.64 grams per cubic centimeter, and let's add it and see what happens to our test weight. Well, 
15 cubic centimeters times 0.64 grams per cubic centimeter gives us 9.6 grams extra in that half liter uh, jar. So we removed 15 grams of water. Uh, we, we got 15 cubic centimeters extra space. We added more corn, uh, that grade four corn we had. We actually lost test weight here because we removed 15 grams of water. We only added 9.6 grams uh, extra corn weight into that um, half liter container. So we're actually losing test weight here. So what exactly uh, is going on? The fact is that when uh, corn kernels lose water, they change their shape and they change their slick slipperiness or slickness. And so what that means is that generally um, you are gaining more than just 15 cubic centimeters of extra space because that corn can pack down um, tighter uh, than, than it could previously because of that change in space, that increase in the slipperiness uh, of, the, of, those corn, of those corn kernels. So generally you gain more than 15 cubic centimeters. Number two, kernels become denser. And so we're not accounting for the increase in density of each individual kernel as it's losing moisture. So once you account for these things, and, and the magnitude of these two, um, these two pathways are going to vary from year to year, as you're going to see in the next slide. But once you account for the change, change in kernel shape and slipperiness, once you account for the increase in kernel density, then you can see why uh, test weight will increase as moisture goes down in some situations. So in general, uh, you gain more space when you dry down kernels than you would expect just from calculating the volume of moisture lost alone. And we, we gain that again because of the change in kernel shape and slipperiness. We also gain test weight because kernel density increases as well as kernel moisture concentration goes down. But the magnitude of these changes vary according to the quality of the grain fill period. So this is data that I just want to illustrate this, the idea that the change in kernel shape, the change in kernel density is going to vary uh, from season to season, from site to site, depending on the quality of the grain fill period. So here, this is data from uh, Illinois. You have uh, corn grain moisture sampled from different fields. And at each corn grain moisture concentration, we're getting uh, pretty dramatically different test weights. Not only are we getting different test weights at each corn grain moisture concentration, but the way test weight increases, the slope of the increase as corn, corn grain moisture declines is actually quite different. So for example, for this light blue um, uh, field, I suppose, you can see that this is the rate of change in, in test weight as corn grain moisture decreases. Um, and this is the rate of change uh, for this field as corn grain moisture decreases. So depending on the year, depending on the field, um, the, the magnitude in the change in test weight uh, as corn grain moisture declines is going to vary. Corn test weight was remarkably low in many fields across the province in 2019. This was in part due to the relatively late planting conditions that many farmers experienced. This ended up causing problems in terms of maturity in the fall, when the corn crop did not necessarily reach black layer before the first killing frost or before temperatures turned very cold, making grain fill, the grain fill process very slow. To deal with this high moisture content corn, many farmers decided to dry their corn, either letting it dry out naturally in the field or uh, drying it in a grain dryer. The expectation here was that by drying this corn, you would be able to increase uh, test weight. However, it was often observed that the exact opposite happened. Uh, drying corn or delaying harvest to hope the corn dries down naturally actually reduced test weight. What was going on? This data from 1980, I think, really explains what happened to Ontario's 2019 harvest. Let me just get my pointer here. All right, so here we have moisture content on the uh, x-axis, 
kernel density grams per cubic centimeter on the y-axis. This is not exactly equivalent to test weight. It's the um, density of a kernel, which is strongly related to test weight. Now, what we see here is that kernel density is going to increase as kernel moisture content declines from 30% down to what we see here, 10%. However, at very high moisture con contents, right, 30% and above, if you dry down from 35, 34, 33%, you dry down corn to 30%, you will actually get a reduction in kernel density, which is actually going to reduce your test weight as well. And so in Ontario, it was probably the fact that farmers were starting at relatively high, say 35% moisture concentration. So you have a kernel density of 1.24, for example, you dry your corn expecting to increase your test weight. Let's say you dry it to 30%, but you get a reduction in kernel density, which is going to end up reducing your test weight. Now, the reason for this is thought to be because of the configuration of starch granules in the endosperm uh, in, very, uh, in, in, in corn kernels that have not reached black layer. So if a corn kernel has not reached black layer, um, the configuration of um, starch granules are such that uh, density is going to decrease as moisture is removed um, between 35, 30 and 35%. To quickly summarize, management strategies designed to increase test weight are generally management strategies which increase kernel weight. Remember that starch is denser than water. And so the best way to increase test weight is to have kernels that have a lot more starch than water at harvest. These strategies fall into one of three categories. The first category are strategies that can increase potential kernel weight. In corn, potential kernel weight is set during the first 10 to 14 days after pollination, what's called the lag phase of grain fill. We don't want any stress to occur during this period. Farmers don't have too much control over things like temperature stress or water stress, but research from um, uh, uh, Indiana suggests that you really, really don't want nitrogen or phosphorus stresses during this period because any phosphorus or nitrogen limitation is going to severely reduce potential kernel weight. Those, uh, it's going to reduce endosperm cell division and therefore reduce the sites available for starch granules to be deposited in that kernel. The second category of management strategies are those which are going to increase the duration of the grain fill period. Generally, we want healthy plants, not generally. We always want healthy plants with good state green potential that meet kernel needs from concurrent photosynthesis and new nutrient uptake. We don't want kernels that are relying on remobilization of nutrients or carbon, especially during early and mid grain fill. During late grain fill, when photosynthesis is very low, temperatures are cool, um, that's when we want these kernels to depend on remobilization, but not necessarily before. We want varieties with low disease risk and fungicide applications where warranted to keep that canopy green, uh, clean, and photosynthesizing, again, uh, to increase photosynthesis and nutrient uptake. We also want cool nights as hot nights will reduce the duration of the grain fill period. The third category of management practices are those which are going to increase the rate of kernel dry matter gain during the grain fill period. So weather is of course outside of anyone's control, but kernel, kernel weight and therefore test weight is going, to be, is going to be increased when we have a favorable photothermal regime with sunny, warm days and cool nights to increase dry matter gain per day. And finally, adequate nutrient supply throughout the grain fill period, especially of nitrogen and phosphorus. In the last slide, I mentioned the importance of phosphorus for kernel weight determination and therefore test weight. The reason for this is twofold. Number one, phosphorus is primarily taken up during grain fill. And number two, most of the phosphorus taken up by a corn crop ends up in the grain. In the, in the figure on the left, you can see on the x-axis axis growth stage from planting to maturity, and on the y-axis, the percentage of total phosphorus uptake. At the start of grain fill, R2, 
we can see that only roughly half of total phosphorus uptake occurred and that most of it is going to end up in the grain. It's a very similar story for zinc as well as other micronutrients. About half or 60% of zinc uptake occurs prior to the start of grain fill. And so maintaining adequate nutrient supply for, for, key, um, for key nutrients, which are primarily taken up during grain fill, is critical for increasing test weight and kernel weight in corn.